process to align a Fedco MSD 350 pump to a motor. Um, the first step we're going to do is install our guide pins. And the function of the guide pin is just to support the weight of the pump on the inlet side uh, when installing so you don't have to try to hold it and guide it in at the same time. Uh, the, the, the pins will hold the weight of the, of the pump so you can focus more of your attention uh, on just bringing the pump in straight uh, so that you don't have any, any uh, issues with the fit. So now that the pins are in, I'm going to raise the pump with the crane, uh, slowly walk it in until I've got the pins going through the motor adapter holes. Uh, once they're in, then I'm just going to slide the pump all the way over until it's making contact with the seat face of the motor. our gap between the seat face of the motor and the motor adapter. Uh, we do this at uh, 0 and 180 or 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Uh, that way we have a better idea what kind of vertical alignment we have uh, and what way we need to go to um, change the pump height or lower it to, to align it. So I'll start by taking the feeler gauges that we include uh, with every shipment uh, and I'll start at this end here. Um, Right now I've got about 91 thousandths of an inch that fits pretty snugly here. Uh, so now I'm going to check on the opposite end at the zero degree uh, to see what kind of gap I have there. And so based on that feeler gauge, I can see that I've got 22 thousandths of an inch at the bottom. So what that tells me is I've got to raise the discharge side of the pump up first in order to help split the difference on that and come back and measure um, once that's done. Uh, one thing I like to do is leave the foot here at the inlet side, closest to the inlet side, leave this one loose until last, so you're not being bound up any um, by this foot fighting your alignment process. It's best just to leave it loose until you've got everything bolted up everywhere else, and then tighten this up last. So what we'll do, because I've got to raise the pump up, I'm going to loosen this top nut and back that off uh, on both sides. And then I'm gonna start by the nut directly under the, uh, the bracket. I'm gonna start to raise that nut up. And as I do that, the, uh, the pump itself will now be pushed up and will go incrementally on each side in order to bring it up equally so we don't cause the pump to rotate or twist. Foot adjusted to where the, the pump has been lifted on the discharge side. I'm going to go through now and, and double check my gap uh, to make sure that I am within the 15 thousandths of an inch gap recommendation that we have in our manual. Uh, so starting at the top, uh, I've got about a 28 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge that fits pretty snugly in there. And if I check at 180 degrees, uh, I've got a 24 thousandths inch feeler gauge that fits snugly at the bottom. So the difference between the two uh, is only four thousandths of an inch, which means my gap here is only two thousandths of an inch smaller than the gap here when you split the difference. Uh, so now that this is well within our criteria of acceptance, I'm going to go through and lock the foot into place so we don't get any change in elevation uh, when we go to our next step. So the first thing we want to do is the bottom nut. We want to make sure it's snug to the bottom of the, of the support bracket. The top nut, we want to run down until it's snug, uh, and then we just give it a tightening up with the wrench. And then the jam nut, we run up to the bottom, uh, snug that, just to make sure nothing will work its way loose uh, during operation. Uh, and that, the same process goes for both sides. So snug up the bottom nut, run the top one down, Tighten it, run the jam nut up to the bottom nut, uh, tighten that up, and then we'll come over here, and the next step will be going over the coupling installation.
Some stuff with the coupling, we're going to be test fitting the coupling with no key on just to make sure we don't have uh, an interference with the diameter of the motor shaft versus the inside diameter of the coupling. Uh, so the first step is just to fit the coupling uh, to the motor shaft, make sure that it slides on easy with uh, nothing impeding its, its motion, which is good there. Uh, next, we like to put the motor key on uh, so we can verify that the dimension to the keyway depth on the coupling is good. Uh, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna get the coupling in Put it on make sure everything fits fine which it does uh, so the next step then i take the coupling off and i like to add anti-seize uh, to the motor shaft and to the drive key uh, and this will prevent rust or anything from building up any say salts or or things like that just from the environment building up on these faces makes removal easier later on um, and so i just put a thin layer of and I sees um, on them uh, to ensure that um, no scales or rusts or anything like that build up. Uh, so once we do that, we go to reinstall the coupling. Now I like to act, have the end of the motor shaft be flush with the end of the coupling hub here when I install it. So that way I know I'm gonna have optimal engagement on the, on the pump side of the hub with the pump shaft and the drive key with that. So. As I'm installing it, I'm looking through the little gap here. Once I see the motor shaft, uh, that's where I stop and I'll insert, and I'll insert the, uh, the set screws for the coupling to lock it to the motor shaft. Okay, so my coupling is where I want it. Now I'm gonna use my set screws, uh, put a little anti-seize on them. Now we lock the, the coupling hub to the motor shaft so it doesn't move during operation. However, the pump shaft is designed to float freely uh, in the coupling hub uh, during operation so that the balance disc can, can properly function as it's been designed to. Um, so for this reason, you won't see any set screws on the motor hub and none should be put on in the future as well. So after that, I install the drive key onto the pump shaft, and I'll do the same thing with the anti-seize there. I'll just put the anti-seize this time on the inside of the coupling. Um, once that's set, we'll be able to go on to the next step, which is to bring the pump in. Uh, and since our alignment is set, we don't need to do anything there. We're just gonna put it back on these pins, um, slide it in, and then we can start to install the motor adapter bolts. Back in line, we've got it sitting on our pins. Um, the next step is to uh, you know, get the pump shaft to insert into the coupling. Um, what I like to do is have the pump shaft be view, like with the drive key, I like to have it viewable through this window so it's easier for me to line the coupling keyway up to that. You guys can do it however you like, but for me I find it's easiest to be able to visually see how it's lined up before I start to push the pump into place. Um, one more thing about the, uh, the guide pins that's really important is once they're installed and they're holding the weight of the pump on this side, we're also protecting the mechanical seal that's installed in here because if you don't have the pins and you're trying to install it, if you were to let the pump sag down too far or lift it up too high, that weight of the pump, the deflection that it would put on the pump shaft, could crack the seal. And if the seal cracks, then the water is going to leak out of that once you start putting water to the system. So I've got my key lined up to the coupling. I'm gonna now slide the pump back until it makes contact with the motor. And I'm gonna to start to install the first two uh, motor adapter bolts um, to make sure that this doesn't back away from the motor. All of our motor adapter bolts installed right now, except for where our guide pins were. I like to leave those on during this process just to make sure that as we're installing our motor adapter bolts, nothing happens that this motor adapter would slide off the C-face and then fall and all the weight now sits on the, the pump shaft again. So now that I've got these six bolts tight, I'll take these guide pins out 
and we can then take the last two motor adapter bolts and install them uh, and tighten them up uh, as we did with the original or the, the previous bolts um, for the process here. Uh, once we have these tight, what we'll end up doing is we'll go to the, uh, the, the, the blue support foot section of the leveling foot and we will start to bolt the feet down to um, the, the base plate itself and um, that way the pump is now secured not only to the motor uh, but secured to the base plate uh, you know rigidly mounting it into place each foot will have four bolts and each bolt will get tightened down um, at all the same. Okay, so now we've got all eight bolts for the position leveling feet tight. So our feet are tight to the base. We've got our motor adapter bolts tight to the motor. Uh, so our pump is secure everywhere that we can secure it down. Uh, so at that point, I've released the crane. Uh, I don't need that anymore. Uh, and then the last step here is to now secure the, the support bracket. Uh, and we do that the same way we did in the first one. So we're gonna we're gonna run the bottom nut up until it's snug to the bottom of the bracket. Then we're gonna take the top nut down, snug it, use our wrench to tighten it, and then we run our bottom jam nut into place uh, and snug that up. So now everything is secure and, and won't break loose during operation. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And once that's done, um, the process to aligning the Fedco MSD product line is complete and uh, everything should be set and ready to go. To point out, um, we did the alignment video on a NEMA motor, but if you've got an IEC motor with one of the larger D-face flanges, um, you can't check the gap between the motor and the motor adapter because you don't have holes that thread into the C-face. You've got holes that are a through hole that you have to use a nut on the back of the bolt for. So in that instance, we tighten the motor adapter to the motor's D-face flange first. Then we come over here, we loosen up the bolts between the inlet and the motor adapter, and we check our gap at the top and the bottom, similar as we did on the motor, uh, but we just do it here. So whatever you get your gap at the top and the bottom, you're gonna, you're gonna subtract those two numbers from each other. And if you're within 15 thousandths of an inch, um, you're good, you don't have to change anything. You can just tighten everything back up and go. But if you've got a bigger gap at the bottom or the top and it exceeds 15 thousandths of an inch, then you have to move your pump up or down accordingly to whatever the gap is. Once you have that set uh, and your gap is now evened out and it's below 15 thousandths of an inch, you can go back through, tighten up your inlet bolts to the motor adapter, and once they're tight, you can go through, tighten the feet to the base plate, uh, and everything is good and you're ready to use the pump.